Hello Unity developer and welcome to another video. In this one I want to showcase something I've been working on in my spare time. Just a small project showcasing some little things, some tips and tricks that you can do in VR to make your experiences really shine. So buckle up, put your space helmets on and let's go to VR. If you're like me and love everything to do with gaming, game development and new technologies, then check out my channel. I've got dozens of videos on how to create your own games and look the latest in tech. And if you like what you see, why not consider a subscription? Thanks very much and enjoy the video. So just as a bit of context before we take a look at the experience, I just wanted to explain what it was all about. A couple of years ago I made this model uh, based on the Virgin Galactic Spaceship 2. And I wanted to do something in VR, just a tiny thing, just to use this model and, and, and to put it to some kind of use after spending quite a while modeling it and doing a, a little interior and everything. And I thought, well, it'd be quite cool if we blasted off through the atmosphere uh, and then had a look at the Earth below us. Um, uh, and I just wanted to show how you can add little things to make even the smallest experience a little bit more immersive. So before I explain what's going on in, in these two scenes that I've made, uh, it's probably best if we go through the experience uh, and you can see what it's all about. So I'm gonna hit play and put on the headset. So the first thing you'll see is the ship blasting through the atmosphere on our way to space to have a look at the world from above. Then the atmosphere slowly fades away and then we find ourselves in orbit. Then the scene changes. It suddenly becomes a lot calmer. And we're able to relax, look at planet Earth below us, clouds going around the Earth. We got some nice ambient audio in the background, which I think I borrowed from Star Trek bridge noise. This, more, this part is just more about relaxing. It's kind of therapeutic, actually. Uh, and then you're able to look out the window and you can see the UK down below, where I live down in Cornwall, right on the pointy bit. Uh, and they're actually getting a spaceport in Newquay, which is pretty cool, um, which I think is actually just going to do like, commercial launches. Nice, calming, soothing experience. But don't take it from me. Let's see what Richard Branson thinks of it. Uh, but anyway, I just thought this gives you a bit of context and now I can show you how it's all put together in Unity and all the, the little things I've done just to make the experience a little bit more enjoyable. So the actual experience is comprised of two scenes. One is called the atmosphere scene and one is called the space scene. Uh, and in my atmosphere scene, I wanted to have the effect of the plane here. Let's turn the effects off. Right, be able to see what's going on easy. I wanted to have the effect here of this plane traveling through the atmosphere and then as it leaves uh, the atmosphere slowly fades away uh, and then you're out into space. And I, I didn't want to have to faff around too much because I didn't have a lot of time so the simplest way I could think to do this was to actually have um, like a cylinder in the scene um, that you sit inside so it's kind of like an inverted cylinder so all the faces are pointing inwards that the ship is traveling through and then when it gets to the end of the cylinder you see this blue area here this is a trigger that I've set up and if I zoom in on here you can see it's got uh, a box collider set to a trigger uh, and this thing called the atmosphere fade controller and all that's doing is as soon as the trigger entry is detected um, it's firing the animator and, and fading out this object here and then I have another trigger in my scene uh, and all this is doing is controlling the fade out on the camera to give it that effect as if um, the, the level switch is occurring and it goes to black and then the switch takes place and then fades back up. Uh, and all this trigger is doing is detecting when we've hit the trigger uh, and then it's going to set off our canvas animator which is attached to our camera which is just a canvas right in front of your face uh, and it is just literally a, like a black object right in front of the camera that gives it the effect that the, everything's fading to black in the scene. It's so close to the camera, you can't actually see any gaps. So uh, that looks quite cool and does the job. So the camera fades out, and then on our, on our last trigger, this is our level load trigger. Uh, and we've got a load scene on trigger script. So as soon as we go into this, it's going to fire up our next scene. So th this scene is all smoke and mirrors. Uh, and initially this was all very cool and it worked it worked it worked great um obviously if you had more time you could really go to town on it and, and probably do something a little bit different to this cylinder 
Um, but then uh, I noticed that it was a bit plain and bland. So what I did is I added a couple of particle systems. Uh, and these are whizzing by the ship as you're flying along. See them coming down there. So give it the effect that you're actually moving forward. Uh, and that really helped. That kind of sold the effect of what I was going for. But what really sold it was the um, was the audio. So a bit of hunting around, I managed to find like a rocket booster audio, which sounded a bit like this. Hang on, can't hear it. There we go, sort out my audio now, so you should be able to hear it. So when I hit play, I've got this rocket booster sound going on in the background. Once I had looked at the particles and the audio, uh, I did the post processing, and that really took it to the next level. And although in the viewport it looks kind of bright, uh, when you actually got it on the headset, it looks a lot, lot better. So the little tweaks to this level, which is, as you can see, is really simple. It's just a plane going up a tube. But once you add in the particle systems with the, the bits flying past the window, uh, and then add in the audio, and then add in the post-processing, you suddenly find you've got quite a nice little scene, which is really easy to work with. Um, and just some development tips as well. Even though it is quite a simple scene, what I've done on these colliders, there's, there's no mesh render associated with these colliders. It has um, a box collider on it, and it also had a, this script that I wrote called the trigger visualizer. So if I was to go ahead and, and add an empty game object to the scene, like so, and I attach some scripts to this and a trigger, a box collider, I wouldn't know where it was in my scene. So if I was adding a box collider here, say this was a trigger point for my game, and I wanted it to do something when the ship entered this area, go ahead and put it in a good spot. So let's say I wanted to know when the ship hit this trigger, uh, which is great. I can see it like this, but the second I come off of it, I don't know where it is and don't know what's going on. So I add the trigger visualizer script on there that I've written uh, and change its alpha and it's currently set to red, but you can change it to green or, or blue, whatever you want to do. Uh, and, and as a developer, having these little gizmos and visualizers in the scene um, really makes it easier to see what's going on. Um, just having these empty game objects that you can't see unless you click on them. But then the, you'll be able to attach any script to this and have it do any kind of actions that you want. Uh, and that trigger visualizer script uh, is very simple. Put it under here under helpers. And all it's, all it's doing is using a particular Unity method called onDrawGizmos. Uh, and I've wrapped it in this compiler if statement here for if it's using the Unity editor to call this method on draw gizmos. And then uh, I'm switching the gizmo color. So I've got an enum where I can select what color I want my bounding box to be. So if it's red, it sets the color to red. Gizmos.color red is there. This is RGB. And then an alpha value, which is taking in um, the gizmo alpha float. And I've set it to a range, so I've got a little slider in the inspector, so you can move it to zero to one, which will set your alpha, like so. If I just show you, so it's got this gizmo alpha. This is that uh, range that's allowing this to happen, and then it's going to draw the gizmo size. It's going to just get hold of the collider that's attached to the game object and get its bounds, uh, and that's what when you scale your box collider that allows the um, the gizmo to also scale along with it. And then we actually draw the gizmo uh, at the bottom here on line 38. That's just a really simple script, but goes a long way in assisting development and help visualize where things are. Uh, and normally I would add on to this as well. So you can have your own gizmos, your own little icons in the scene um, to make things a little bit more apparent on where they are and what they're doing. So this is that, this is this tiny little scene. Um, it did, really didn't take very long to put together, um, but it was just having those little extra bits like the particle systems, the post-processing, uh, and then some of these like smaller developer tools here, which really help the process uh, and really sell the immersion as well. And just as another tip, even on a small project like this, I normally set up my hierarchy so um, it's easy to read and find stuff very quickly. Um, so I've got this, these empty game objects, which are literally just like a title for the stuff below it. So everything under here is art related. I've got my atmosphere set up and my ship controller with it's all its art attached to it. 
And then I have my interactions, which are on my triggers, uh, lighting down below, uh, and then any VFX, so my particle systems and post-processing. So this laying out your hierarchy, something similar to this, is really going to help you find stuff in your game, especially if your game's quite big. So let's go ahead and jump into the space scene and look at how that one's put together. And then here we are in the second scene, uh, and this is the one where you're sitting in the cabin of the spaceship and you're looking out of the window and you can see the world below you. And this one is kind of designed to be a little bit more relaxing, just taking uh, a fly around space. And again, the same kind of treatment um, and process was done on this scene. So uh, it's all very simple graphics as just really my plane model and the planet Earth below. And then to add on top of that, went through and added some audio, which um, was kind of tricky because obviously we're the only one in here, so it's not like we can have voices or anything like that. But I did manage to find like a Star Trek bridge beeping noise, which was quite sci-fi um, and seemed quite fitting. So I whacked that in there as a bit of audio and then turned on the post processing, um, which really then took it to the next kind of level. There's no actual interaction in here. It's, it's more like a, a sit down and watch kind of experience. Um, and you know, and that's perfectly fine in VR. Not everything has to be interactive and a game. You can have these experiences where you're more a participant and just watching what's going on and having a, a journey through a virtual space as opposed to um, doing stuff. Just doing this in VR just shows what an amazing experience this is actually going to be in real life. You know, when you can look out the window of your spaceship uh, and you'll see the world below you. I don't know when um, Virgin are going to start going with their first paid passengers, but um, I think it's pretty expensive to go on. I think I might need some AdSense to start doing something like that. So the spaceship's just set up. Um, just as you see here, it doesn't really do much. I think there, there is an animation attached to the plane. So um, I think when it runs, the wings are in its upright position and the plane just slowly rotates around um, towards the Earth. And then the Earth clouds are spinning in the background uh, across the um, Earth's surface just to give it a little bit more depth. Uh, and that's really it. So it's a really simple experience. Still a little fun one nonetheless, even though it is really short. But you can, you can kind of sit in the plane for as long as you want and, and look out the window. Again, I set my hierarchy up. That's all nice and structured and you see how simple it is. I've literally got my XR interaction manager, the art for the air, for art for the ship, and my XR rig is just sat inside the ship here at the back, on the back seat. The only thing about this level is on our on the XR camera rig, um, let's have a look, let's find it in the scene. You'll see on my camera I've got a canvas, and this is the fade canvas, so when the um, application runs, and this level is loaded. This canvas um, has put my black image there on my canvas, and you can see that um, as the scene loads and fades in, this will slowly fade down, and then it looks to the wearer like they've just transitioned from a blank, black environment into this spaceship one from the first scene. Let's jump back into the atmosphere scene and let's have another go. So we find ourselves zooming through the atmosphere. We've got our particle effects coming by the window, giving the impression of speed and movement. And our atmosphere trigger happens and the atmosphere fades out and we find ourselves back out in orbit. Then the scene transition occurs with the canvas fading up. And then the canvas fades down and we're presented with our new scene. But we're in space. We're inside our capsule or our spaceship and you can look out the window and see planet Earth below. There's no more flying the plane as well, which is quite freaky. Um, it's on autopilot. Um, but hopefully you've learned something from this video and, and you've seen just how easy it is to put together a very small experience, but adding the little things that really make it seem polished. So things like your post-processing, um, audio effects, spending time on that, and then Adding a nice scene transition so it doesn't just jump cut from one scene to another. Uh, it fades out nice and fades back in. And it makes the experience feel a lot more comfortable for the user. It's worth spending time on those little things and sometimes they can go overlooked because it's quite easy to get excited and rush a project just to get it out. But definitely worthwhile doing all the little things. Uh, and hopefully you've seen 
how I do it from the development side, where I've structured the hierarchy nicely. Um, and I think that works for big or small projects. Um, just labeling everything and making sure everything's named appropriately so you can find stuff in the future or someone else that you're working with can find something in the future. And hopefully you've seen how using um, like helper scripts, like adding the gizmos to empty game objects in your scene that contain scripts are important. Visualizing them in the scene view so you, you get a better understanding of what's going on. But this is quite a small experience and I put it together really quickly. Um, but because of the subject matter that it is, space, I think it's really cool. And I think a lot of other people will relate to that. But as I say, I hope you've enjoyed it and learned something and will be able to take something away to use in your own projects. I'll put this build of this experience up on my Patreon page uh, for all patrons to have a go on if they've got headsets and uh, also push up the Unity project as well to there. So there we are, that's the end of the video. I really hope you enjoyed watching it and I hope you learned something and managed to find something that you can take away and use in your own projects. Next week we start our VR training course uh, all about making your own games using XR Interaction Toolkit and Unity. But until then, I'll see you in the next video. Take care.